Hi there, we're starting a brand new series today called Powerful Voices. We have so many voices speaking into our lives and it's important for us to differentiate which are the important voices and which not. You know, if we just look around a bit, we're bombarded by so many images and you could say so much information. You look on the TV, from the internet, all the information, all the images coming to us all the time. The messages we listen to, the sermons we listen to, the people we interact with. What about the billboards and the ads and all of those things? All of that is, is messages and, and voices speaking to us. And those voices affect us. They affect our moods, our attitudes, and ultimately who we become. But listen to this. Do you know that there is no voice more powerful, more influential in your life and my life, than our own voice. How come? Because nobody else talks to you more than you do. I'm referring to our self-talk. Self-talk is the ability to, to talk to yourself either out loud or just quietly deep down in your, in your own mind. And you'll find some people do it out loud and they don't even realize and, and they'll be talking to themselves. You walk past, you're like, sorry, I, I didn't get that. And they're like, no, 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 sorry, I was just, I was just talking to myself. We had to move a staff member uh, just recently from an open plan office and move this staff member to their own office because they were just talking to themselves so much and distracting the other staff members. And so some people do it out loud and then other people just do it quietly deep down in here. And I think we've all done that. We've walked into a into a new restaurant or maybe you walk into a into a meeting room where you're gonna meet with some people for the first time and you walk in and you look around and you quietly say to yourself on the inside, This is this is nice. I, I like this and the first person walks in and you meet her and she's nice and she's friendly and you think, well, she's friendly and she's certainly well-dressed. And you sit down, you have the meeting, and maybe you feel a bit out of place and you feel, ah, I don't have much to contribute. All of that is, is self-talk. And so our self-talk can be spoken words or unspoken thoughts. Spoken words or unspoken thoughts. If you've ever done public speaking, you'll know how crazy this is. And, and I've certainly experienced this. Were you busy speaking to, to the crowd and then suddenly somebody gets up and maybe she's going to the bathroom and, and, and your self-talk is, I hope I haven't offended her, I hope, I hope she isn't leaving. And so while my mouth is going in one direction, you know, my, my thoughts are going in another direction. And we all have that. We all have a form of, of self-talk. And what we say to ourselves is extremely important because it'll determine who we become, and what we do, and how we treat people in our lives. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 4 verse 23. It says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And so it's referring to our thinking and our self-talk, the things we say to ourselves. And what it's saying is be careful. Don't be casual about that. Don't be casual about the things you think, the things you say to yourself, because it's going to determine the course of your life. It'll determine what you become, determine what you do. It's going to determine how you treat people at the end of the day. You see, your self-talk is either going to be encouraging or discouraging. It's either going to help you or, or hurt you. It's either going to build you up or, or break you down. So, Really, when you look at it, your self-talk is either going to be positive or negative. Now, I'm not suggesting that you wake up in the morning and you do as Mark does, because apparently he goes to the mirror in the morning, looks into the mirror, and he says, Hey, you gorgeous thing, you cupcake. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just suggesting that you and I become a little bit more aware of our, of our self-talk. Because, you see, we may have negative self-talk that creeps in and we're not even aware of it. You see, negative self-talk can sneak into our conversations, those that we have with ourselves and even those that we have with other people. We may say to a colleague, 
Oh, man, you know, I'm just not on my A game at the moment. We may say to a spouse, you know, my, my cooking is no good. We may say to ourselves, you know, I'm, I'm not good at this. I'm just, uh, you know, and, and so what happens? Negative self-talk creeps in and we're not even aware of it. Now, you may be wondering, you know, Leonard, this self-talk stuff, isn't that, you know, isn't this more just uh, positive thinking? You know, it's the kind of stuff we get from from motivational books and self-help books. Oh, no, this is the stuff that we get from the book, from the Bible. Probably the best example of this is found in Psalm 42 and Psalm 43. Those two Psalms, by the way, really form a unit. Those Psalms were written by David when he went through a very difficult time. He was he was banished from his kingdom, from his his palace, and so he was living far away, you know, on on his own and going through a really, really difficult time. And so he's down and, and discouraged and depressed. And listen to what he writes. I'm reading from Psalm 42, verse 5. He says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise Him again. What does he say? I will praise Him again. He says, I used to praise God. When my circumstances were great and things were good, he says, I, I praised God. He says, now that I'm going through this difficult time, I need to praise Him again. He says, I will praise Him again my Savior, and my God. And then he repeats that in verse 11. And then in the next chapter, chapter 43, verse 5, he repeats the same thing again. And what's interesting, he's not busy praying. He's not busy addressing God, nor is he addressing us as the reader. But he's addressing himself. It's his self-talk, his self-dialogue. And this is how powerful our self-talk can be. Because when you and I go through a difficult time and we're down and discouraged like David was, and, and we all go through times like that, when we find ourselves going through something like that, we can correct it by correcting our, our self-talk. The moment you correct that, the moment you reorder your self-talk, you can put yourself in a completely different direction. Now, there are three types of, of self-talk. Negative self-talk, positive self-talk, and possibility self-talk. Negative self-talk, of course, this is very destructive in our lives, very damaging. This is where we say things like, ah, oh, you know, I'm not good at this, and I can't do that, and, you know, and I always do this, and, and we break ourselves down. And so you'll find negative self-talk makes us less creative and, and less charismatic, we are less likely to take the lead when there's just negative self-talk all the time. We, we're less likely to excel and to have success in our lives. It, it doesn't have a positive effect upon our lives at all. And so that's negative self-talk, positive self-talk. Well, that's very helpful. That, that builds us up. That's when we say things like, man, I can do this. I'm good at that. You know, I was successful last time. I'm, I'm going to be successful again. Possibility self-talk is even better. That's when we say to ourselves, what if I did this? What if I achieved that? Or what if I learned another language and, and, I, and I'll be able to? And, and, and those, are, those are possibilities. Now, let's go back to negative self-talk because it's very often disguised as a joke. That's when Somebody says of themselves, ah, oh, you know, nice job, you dumb ass. You know, you're such a loser. And at the time, it may even be funny and may even come across, you know, the guy's pretty humble and may even make other people feel better about themselves. But you see, it may have short-term advantages, but negative self-talk is damaging in the long run. And so you'll find... People who have negative self-talk often rationalize it by saying, oh, it's just a joke, you know, it's, it's, it's just a joke. But at the end of the day, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt them. It's going to harm them. If you want to check if your self-talk is negative, then ask yourself, if somebody I don't like, somebody I don't get along with, 
think of that person. If they had to say the same thing to me, the same stuff that I've been saying about myself, if they had to say that, how would I feel if they had to do that? You see, the problem with negative self-talk is that it always gets progressively worse. It may start off, you know, funny, and it may start off just, just a little bit negative, but it gets worse and worse, and till eventually, you know, the guy who's late for appointment, you know, he says to himself, you know, you idiot, you know, you, you can never be on time, you know, you're always late. The girl that messes up in a relationship, oh man, you know, what's wrong with you? You know, you always mess up. You're going to self-destruct. You know, what, what's wrong with you? Even worse, the person who says, you know, you don't even deserve to live. And that's the problem with self-talk, negative self-talk, is it starts off, you know, kind of may even be funny, but it gets progressively worse and worse if if we let it go. Now, the opposite of confidence and and boldness and, and all those good qualities is self-doubt. Where does that come from? That comes from negative self-talk. And so self-doubt is when we tell ourselves, you know, you're not good at that and you'll never be able to do that. Self-doubt is when we don't build the kind of relationships that we should be building because because we're doubting ourselves and we're holding back and we stay in wrong relationships, bad relationships, longer than we should. Self-doubt lowers our self-esteem. Self-doubt directly contradicts God's Word because the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, one of the ways, and this is probably one of the best ways to correct our self-talk is to get into agreement with God. You see, when you and I start speaking what God says about us, when, when we start speaking that even quietly deep down on the inside, it, it can have a profound effect upon our lives, especially in the long run. When you start saying, you know what, I'm blessed and I'm forgiven and I'm a child of Almighty God, and, and God's hand is upon me. When you start saying those things, let me say to you, those aren't just nice words or positive affirmations. That's agreeing with the creator of the universe. And when you start doing that, man, you're giving life. You're drawing those things into, into your own life. Remember what happened to Abraham and, and Sarah? God told Abraham that they were going to have a child. They were almost 100 years old. So Abraham goes in his excitement and he tells Sarah. And the Bible says the first thing she does is to laugh. No doubt her self-talk was something like this. That's crazy. That, that's crazy. You know, I'm, I'm an old woman. That's never going to happen. And so God knew if he was going to change their situation, he would have to change their self-talk. So what did he do? He changed their names. Genesis chapter 17, we read how God changes Sarai to Sarah, which in the Hebrew means princess. God changes Abraham to Abraham, which means father of many nations. And so before they even had a child, God was already calling them that. You see, you can't wait for things to happen in your life and then you start speaking positive. Sometimes we've got to call it by faith. You see, you've got to declare you're healthy before health is going to show up. You've got to say, I'm blessed, before blessing shows up. Think about it. Before Abraham had a single child, God already calls him the father of many nations. You see, the Bible tells us in Romans 4 verse 17 that God calls the things that aren't as if they already were. And so when you and I get into agreement with God, when we start speaking God's word over our lives, even if it's just quietly, 
deep down in here, instead of instead of saying negative things, our self-talk is is positive, but it's declaring God's word. You know what we're doing? We're prophesying God's word over our lives. And it's just a matter of time. And those things will become a reality in our lives because we're agreeing with the creator of, of the universe. One of the smartest things that you and I can do is to get into agreement with, with God and start speaking what he says over our lives. I think one of the reasons our self-talk is so important is because the words we say start taking root on the inside. It starts settling deep down in our spirit. And when your self-talk is positive, when you're speaking God's word, guess what happens? That starts settling in your spirit. And that starts replacing the negative things people have said about you or to you in the past. Maybe for some of you, you've grown up with people who've spoken negative things over your life. And I want to say to you today, don't repeat those things. Don't walk around saying, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm just clumsy, or I'm just lazy, or I'm just whatever they said. Don't repeat those things, because you see, when you repeat them, you're reinforcing that in your life. You want to be repeating the things God has said about you, because those are the things that you want to reinforce in your life. You want those things to get down into your spirit and to settle and to grow and to replace the ugly things people have said. Listen to Philippians 4 verse 8. It says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure. And so you can already see he's referring to the positive, the good, the lovely things. He says, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Now notice it doesn't say, if, if there's anything that you can't do, if there's anything that you've messed up in the past, if there's anything that you're scared of. No, it doesn't say that. It says focus on the good things, the positive things, the, the beautiful things. Those are the things that we should be thinking about. Those are the things that, that we should be speaking. Our self-talk should be made up of, of those things. You see, friends, if you want to change your life, you've got to change your self-talk. Every single day, you and I are writing the script to the story of our lives through the things we are constantly saying. So when you walk around and you say, you know what, I, I always blow it in relationships because I always seem to put my foot in it. You know, I just, I just can't get things right. Guess what's happening? You're busy speaking that over your life and that's going to become a reality in your life. That's the script. That's the script for the story of your life. So you need to change that. And you need to say, you know, I used to put my foot into it, <laughs> but I've learned, you know, and now I can control my tongue. I put a guard in front of my mouth. I think before I speak, you know, my relationships are blessed. I'm so grateful for the people in my life. You see, that's what we need to do. I'm talking about reordering our self-talk. I'm, I'm talking about correcting our self-talk. Why is this so important? Well, one of the reasons is because our self-talk and our self-esteem go hand in hand. Remember the story of the, of the 12 spies who went into the promised land, came back, they had to give a report to Moses. And so two of the spies come with one report. Ten of the other spies, they come with a, a different report. And so they come and say to Moses, you know, the land is great. The land is good. Everything you said. But there are giants in the land. And then they said this, we seem like grasshoppers in our own sight. We seem like grasshoppers. You see, the problem wasn't how they saw the giants. There was nothing wrong with that. You see, the problem was that they didn't see themselves right. No doubt their self-talk was wrong. They were saying to themselves, we're never going to be able to do this. We're not strong enough. You know, we, we're not big enough. This, this is never going to work. And so their self-talk was negative. And what happened? It affected their, their self-esteem. It affected the way that they saw themselves. 
And so they said the wrong thing, which caused them to believe the wrong thing. And you know what's sad here is that they never entered into the promised land. They, they never enjoyed the fullness of what God had planned for them. And that story is a metaphor for the life that, that God has for you and me. And we can miss out on that. And we can lose what God has for us if we don't correct our self-talk. And if we go around saying the wrong things, we can limit what God wants to do. And it's crazy, you know, when you look at it, how, how some people almost fight for their limitations. They go around telling everybody else what they can't do and what, what they're not able to do. They tell others. They tell themselves. It's almost like they, they're fighting for that. They're trying to convince themselves and, and convince others. Listen, friends, if you don't see yourself as valuable, nor will others. And I think one of the reasons we fail is because of the wrong self-talk. It's almost like we talk ourselves out of success, out of accomplishments. And then, and then we wonder why, why we're we not achieving what God has for us. You know why? It's because we're discouraging ourselves. And you know, it's strange because most people don't have a problem to encourage somebody else. You know, they see potential, they see possibilities, and, and they'll fan that into flame. They'll encourage them but they have a problem encouraging themselves. Why is that? You know, the Bible tells us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. God tells us to love ourselves, to be positive about ourselves, and certainly to encourage ourselves. You cannot lead a positive life with negative self-talk. It's, it's not going to work. So let me wrap this up quickly for us. Let me give you the application. And I'm going to make it just very concise. Just give you three points quickly. Here's what I want you to do. Here's the first one. Identify any negative self-talk. Become aware of it. You see, if, if you're not aware of it, you can't change it. And so hopefully after today, you'll, just, you'll, you'll start recognizing it in your own life. Identify that self-talk. Listen, there's no other voice more important, more influential, more powerful in your life than your own voice. Because nobody talks to you more than yourself. And so you've got to identify if there's negative self-talk. And here's the second one. If there is, replace it. Don't resist it. Replace it. Whatever we resist will persist. So if I say to you, you know, don't think of the spotted hippo. You know, resist that thought. Don't think of the spotted hippo. <laughs> Guess what you're going to be thinking of. I, I wish I could see some of your thoughts now on the screen. And so don't resist it. You've got to replace it. Replace it with what? We said replace it with God's Word. There's so much in God's Word. I wish I had time just to go into that and give you some some more practical examples. But I just want to say to you, God never created us to be against ourselves. God never created us to walk around with the wrong image on the inside and, and, and the wrong self-talk. That's the enemy's job. And I don't want to team up with him. And so if, if there's been any, any negative, I want to be replacing it. And so here's the third one quickly. Just, just be grateful. Just be grateful. Start recognizing the things in your life that you're grateful for. And you'll find gratitude has a way of transforming your attitude. Gratitude has a way of transforming your attitude. And so if you and I can become more aware of our self-talk. And, and right in the beginning, if I said to you, you know, do, do you talk to yourself? Many of you would have said, no, not a chance. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't do that kind of stuff. But we all do. Some out loud and some, some quietly. And we've got to make sure that our self-talk is, is good and positive and right and encouraging. We've got to do that. Come on, let's pray together. Father, thank you so much that we can just open your word again today. Thank you, Lord, that you believe in us, that you've got good plans for us. And I pray, Lord, that the things we think and the things we say, even out loud or 
deep down on the inside ourselves, talk, Lord, we'll be honoring and upbuilding. It'll line up with what you have for our lives. We, we don't want to team up with the enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy and break us down and, and see us defeated. We don't want to do that. Lord, we want to walk in victory, but we've got to make sure that our self-talk is, is positive. Help us in this regard. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you.